President Muhammadu Buhari received Nasarawa community on a thank you visit. EFCC arranged former Accountant General three orders in court plus updates from the world of sports. Hello, good evening, and thank you for joining us on our Prime News on NTA Abelkuta. I'm Yemi Dalimu. President Muhammadu Buhari says returning the governing All Progressive Congress to power in the 2023 election is a critical pathway towards sustaining the nation's upward trajectory in social economic growth and development. The president said this while receiving a high-powered delegation from Nazarawa State on a thank you visit. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. Led by Governor Abdullah Sule, the Nasarawa delegation comprising royal fathers, community and political leaders irrespective of party affiliation is here to show appreciation to the president for the numerous projects executed in the state as well as approving the takeover of the Lafia airport by the federal government. By this approval, Your Excellency, we can now see our airport being properly utilized, not only as the cargo airport that was originally meant for, but as a commercial, and more importantly, a security airport. 60% of the refund, he said, will be utilized in the completion of the Lafia Cafe Road and the balance in promoting youth agricultural activities, equipping three science and technical schools, two new general hospitals, as well as the construction of modern markets in Nasarawa, Wamba, Toto, and Awe towns. President Muhammad Buhari, who described Nasarawa State as very dear to his heart, expressed the conviction that the people will always stand to be counted in the onerous task of entrenching democracy and pushing forward the frontiers of good governance in the country. The proximity of Nasarawa State to the FCT naturally makes the state a partner in infrastructural development. We therefore need more collaboration to enhance this proximity with other contiguous states to achieve more integrated development. To reassure Nigerians and indeed the international community of his administration's commitment and personal desire to bequeath an irreversible political process that will remain democratic and acceptable to the people. President Buhari, however, stressed the need for continuity to enable the governing APC consolidate on its achievements in the last seven years. The House of Representatives has explained that its resolution to urge suspension of the sale of fire power plants was informed by the recommendation of the National Economic Council. The Council, the House notes at its meetings on 24th December 2019, discouraged the sale of assets of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company because of what it calls the dysfunctional state of discourse in Nigeria. The House recalled that attempts in 2013 to sell the power plant failed as the country cannot rely on one grid system. The House Committee on Power and that of privatization will commence investigation on the proposed sale. Far-reaching and decisive measures are being considered by the federal government towards controlling and containing all criminal activities undermining national security and stability. Attorney General and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami announced this while briefing journalists after the meeting of the National Security Council. He said, when finalized, terrorists Bandits and other criminal gangs will be incapacitated from executing their nefarious activities. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the reports. The National Security Council meeting, summoned by President Muhammad Buhari, reviewed all aspects of the nation's security situation. Apart from the recent attack on the Kuje medium custodial facility in the FCT, the criminal gangs have also not relented in attacking soft targets in parts of the country, abducting people and demanding ransom payment. We had extensive discussions on every aspect of uh, issues concerning security and insecurity in Nigeria. It shows the concern and the commitment of the federal government 
to the security of the Nigerian people. Consequently, far-reaching resolutions were developed for consideration arising from the issues critically analyzed. These include the possibility of restricting the use and distribution of motorcycles as the most logistical means being deployed by terrorists, as well as the suspension of mining activities as possible sources of terrorist financing. The major consideration and the basis for determination of productivity or otherwise is the national interest. In the meantime, the Interior Minister, Rauf Arabashola, confirmed that interim report in respect of the ongoing investigation of the attack on Kuje Custodial Center has been forwarded to President Muhammad Buhari. We identify all those whose action or inaction led to that unfortunate incident. The National Security Council meeting was the second in two weeks and fourth in the year 2022. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. The suspended Accountant General of the Federation, Ames Idris, had been arraigned before a High Court of the Federal Capital Territory sitting in Maitama. Ahmed Idris was arraigned along with three others for on 14 count charge bordering on stealing and abuse of public trust. One of the accounts alleged that the former AGF received gratification worth more than 15 billion naira to facilitate the payment of 13% derivation to nine oil producing states in the country. Defendants who are being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission pleaded not guilty to all the counts. After their plea, counsel to defendant filed a motion for the bail application of the defendant, which the prosecuting counsel objected, and all the court to remand them in the correctional facility pending the determination of their bail application. The presiding judge, Justice Adeyemi Ajayi, ordered the defendant to be remanded in correctional facility while counsel is expected to argue their bail application on the next date of adjournments. A more inclusive regulatory climate of social change policy governance has been suggested as a solution to the negative effect of social media causing conflict, heightened insecurity and spreading falsehood in Nigeria. This was the fallout of the fourth anniversary lecture of the pen pushing media delivered by Dr. Chichi and Nyologu Okoye in Abelkuta, the Ogun State Capital. Speaking on the topic social media regulation, insecurity, and election accountability in Nigeria, the guest lecturer, regional director for West Africa Ford Foundation, Dr. Chichi Anyogolu Okoye, says social media made the world a truly global village, providing opportunity for millions of people, especially youths, to form online community as well as serve as a vehicle for the advancement of human rights, among other advantages. She however suggested that apart from the positive aspect of the social media, its handlers also use it to spread falsehood, stabilize the government, promote polarization, heighten insecurity, cause conflict among other negative effects. Dr. Anyagulu Okoye says striking the balance and adopting a co-regulation system as the best way to address the misuse of the social media. A co-regulatory model will include tripartite government coordination, industry, CSOs, and academics in defining and coordinating the delicate balance. In the face of heightened insecurity in the country, there is no doubt that some rules to guide social media are necessary. Stakeholders, including the first PRO, Onumu Iwa Adijobi, say the lecture is apt. There is need for us to regulate it. And like what the lecturer said, co-regulation is key. It should not be one-sided. It's not to be seen as if we're actually trying to cage the media. No. Everybody has a role to play. The government to make policies on how to control and monitor the use of social media. Can control but not regulate. So by and large, I think it's a major uh, development that we're very, very happy about. Founder of Pen Pushing, an online media platform, Dimeji Kaidi Adedeji says the lecture is part of solution journalism aimed at addressing critical challenges facing the nation. We talk about insecurity, we talk about election, and we talk about social media regulation. These are many things that is affecting the society. And we are looking at what can we do to learn lessons. In Ambeo Kutan, Pen Pushing, 
So I quite appreciate that. Good messages from eminent Nigerians, including the 14th Emir of Kano, Lamido Sanusi, presentation of Award of Excellence to Distinguished Personalities, as well as cutting of the anniversary cake, rounded off the program. In a the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMB, Head of Tertiary Education Institutions and other stakeholders in the education sector, have announced the minimum cut-off mark for admission in the 2020-2023 academic session. Olayinka Uju has details. In 2021, Tertiary institutions in Nigeria were unable to conduct the 2021 admissions within the time frame due to constraints occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. The industrial action by ASU is also affecting some of the processes including the 2021 academic calendar. Now, in this auditorium are policy makers in the admission process from tertiary institutions across the country and the decision to take here will determine the fate of more than 1 million candidates who sat for the 2022 UTME. Anybody who says I want to admit one person, should we take it or should we say no, the minimum should go up to 140 or 150? And after thorough debates by all stakeholders, a minimum national cut-off mark for admissions into universities in Nigeria was pegged at 140. For polytechnics, 120, while that of Colleges of Education is 100. Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, urged all institutions to adhere strictly to all admission regulations using the Central Admission Processing System or face sanctions, as there will no longer be room for illegal admissions anymore. I must reiterate my stance that no violator will go and punish, even after he or she must have completed their tenure of office. At the end of the policy meeting, the stakeholders agreed that the 31st of December 2022 is the closing date for admissions for the 2022-2023 academic session for all tertiary institutions in the country. Online Kaoju, NTA News. You are still on to Channel 12 News at 7. The news will continue after the break. Stay with us. Everybody knows say I be real person, even for my acting. Now original. Do it, mama. Enjoy my people. As now they see me so, I know they joke with anything where they bring rich flavor, subtle nutrition, and great taste. Like my checkers custard make three in one. The Totorica, Banda, and Rich Custard. Can someone get these two out of my set now? Good thing, good or bad. I no go lie. Mmm, this na custard. Checkers. Mmm, na custard be that. Power. The performance. Concentrated power. Concentrated performance. The partnership of concentrated power. So clean. The official regional partner of Paris Saint Germain. Everybody knows say I be real person, even for my acting. Now original. Do it, mama. Enjoy my people. As now they see me so, I know they joke with anything where they bring rich flavor, subtle nutrition, and great taste. Like my checkers custard make three in one. The Totorica, Danda, and Rich Custard. Can someone get these two out of my set now? 
good thing good I beg. I no go lie. Mmm. This na custard. Checkers. Mmm. Na custard be that. Glow Breaker Day Plus Plus is here and every day is now Christmas. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New customers will get an unmatched 1,000 Naira welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow SIM today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. Thank you and welcome back. Let's now join Uluwashi Adeleye on entertainment decks for latest in the entertainment scene. Nollywood actress Messi Aibi has joined her husband Kazim Adeoti to celebrate his son Jamal on his new age. Hours after his wife Funcho celebrated her son, Kazim Adeoti also took to his Instagram page to celebrate his son. Sharing a photo of him and his son smiling and wishing him a happy birthday, Kazim Adeoti also described his son as an amazing young man. Similarly, Nollywood actor Mustafa Sholagbade has spent a lovely message to celebrate his son Yasir Sholagbade on his next move academically. Mustafa Sholagbade joined his son's mother Adewu Mifatai to mark his graduation ceremony online. The proud father shared photos and videos of his son graduating to the next class on his verified Instagram page. Nigerian rapper Nito Chuku Chike, popularly known as Nito C, and his beautiful wife Nicole Chike marked their 10th wedding anniversary on Thursday, July 21, 2022. The celebrants took to their verified Instagram page where they shared photos and videos of how far they have come, the lovely caption. And that's all on Entertainment News. Uluwashi Yadile. Up next, Sports Update with Kene Ima Agudike. Super Falcons of Nigeria and Shi Polo Polo of Zambia file out tonight at the start Mohammed V in Casablanca in the battle of a third place finish at the 2022 Africa Women's Cup of Nations. The encounter, which will be live on the NTA at 8.30 p.m., is the third meeting between the two countries at the tournament, with Nigeria winning the previous matches, scoring 10 goals without conceding any. We hope that um, today what we well, the same doggedness we saw um, against Morocco is something we're going to see today. It might not get up to 120 minutes. I hope we'll finish it by 90, and I know that the girls are ready. And communes continue to pour in for Senegal's Sadio Mane at Nigeria's Assisa Roshala, both of whom emerged best players on the continent at the CAF Awards in Rabat Thursday night. It is Mane's second successive award, while Oshala wins it for a record five times since 2014, surpassing Perpetua Nkocha, who claimed the accolade on four occasions. At Sashola winning their fifth, uh, fifth African Football of the Year award is a welcome development uh, for Nigerian sport, especially considering the fact that the Super Falcons will not be playing at the final. Team Nigeria to the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham have been charged to exceed their previous record in the game's history. British High Commissioner in Nigeria, Katrina Lang, gave the charge at a reception organized by the High Commission in Abuja in honor of the contingent. If my mind may concede it, if my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. Believe in yourself, believe in your dreams. Go Nigeria! Our hopes are high on, on the competition and we are aiming for the good. Meanwhile, Noah Lyles stormed to the men's 200 meters victory to lead an American clean sweep with a time of 19.31 seconds at the World Athletics Championships in Oregon as Jamaica's Sherika Jackson eased to women's 200 meters victory in 21.45 seconds, beating compatriot Shelley Ann Fraser Price to second place. That sports update. I am Kene Ima Abudike, Antigua News. Thank you, Kene. And it's a done note that we wrap up the news for tonight. We thank you for watching. Good night.